This week, the 4th of July is celebrated by a Civil War-stricken nation. The main action this week is on the 2nd of July, the Battle on Hoax Run. The Union is led by Major General Robert Patterson. Despite having three divisions, and then some, only two brigades will be in this battle, the 1st and 6th. The 1st Brigade is led by Colonel George H. Thomas. It is made up of the 6th, 21st, and 23rd Pennsylvania, 2nd U.S. Cavalry, and some extra Philadelphia in Cavalry. And one battery of artillery committed by Abner Doubleday. The 6th Brigade is led by Colonel Abercrombie. It is made up from the 4th Connecticut, 2nd Massachusetts, 11th Pennsylvania, 1st Wisconsin, and some Philadelphian Rangers. Just for some entry, Abercrombie is married to Patterson's daughter, and Thomas was in charge of Jeb Stewart, who will be coming against him in this upcoming battle. Jeb wrote earlier that he wanted to hang Thomas for treason, for not fighting for the Confederacy. Thomas is a native of Virginia. That's pretty much all I have on what the history between the two are. Each brigade is made up of 4,000 men, give or take, so approximately 8,000 men for the Union will fight on July 2nd. Colonel? Thomas Jackson is actually only here to delay Patterson's force. So at 4 in the morning on the 2nd of July, Jackson is ready for a battle where he is sure to lose ground. Jackson sets up the 5th Virginia at Porterfield Farm. He has sharpshooters in the building itself, artillery in front of it. Jeb's cavalry is to the west. 10 a.m., the Union starts to appear on the road, and the Confederates open fire. This battle lasts two hours as the Union continues to bring more of its numbers to bear. At noon, Jackson starts to pull back his men. Jeb also begins to fall back, but he is actually in front of the main Union line. And when he's falling back, he sees the 15th Pennsylvania. Jeb's cavalry captures 480 of them. Three resist and are killed. The main battle, three Union soldiers die and 20 are wounded. 91 Confederate casualties happen, the exact makeup of wounded, captured, or killed is unknown. Jackson and Jeb Stewart return to the main army, and Patterson occupies Martinsburg. On the 4th in Martinsburg, a young 17-year-old, Billy Boyd, has Confederate flags in her room. The Union soldiers hear of this and decide to hang a Union flag outside her house. Then the soldiers go on to cuss at Bell's mom. This enrages Bell so much, she pulls out a pistol and shoots the Union soldier. Of course, for this, she is taken into custody, but is somehow exonerated. Despite this, she is still put under careful watch, where she seduces a captain of the Union to giving her information. So if you couldn't tell, this story is probably a lie, made up by Bella Boyd. Why am I reporting it? Two reasons. One, just because of the sheer insanity of the entire story, picturing from how the Union soldiers knew she had Confederate flags, to them just cursing at her mom for no reason, to Boyd pulling a gun, where did she get that, to her being exonerated for murder, to then being able to seduce the captain after the captain's comrade was killed in front of him by her. So yeah, the story is fake, but that leads to me to the second reason I'm telling it. It gives us an introduction to Bella Boyd, who does start spying for the Confederacy around this time. Also on the 4th, Leonidas Polk is given command of the 2nd Department of the Confederacy. This is the area between the Mississippi River and the Kentucky River. And Albert Sidney Johnston makes it into Confederate territory. Johnston is a veteran of the Mexican-American War, so are a lot of the generals, and the Utah War. This is the last war fought between any form of U.S. government and the Mormons. Being a veteran, he has proven himself as an able tactician. So we will see where he goes from here. For the final thing on the 4th, let's go to Washington, D.C., 
The House of Representatives, Henrik Wright, takes seat as a representative from the 12th District, Pennsylvania, taking over from George Scranton, who died in March. Actually, one last thing. This week, numerous members from Congress arrived to fill vacant seats besides Henrik Wright. From Ohio, Representatives Richard Harrison and Samuel Worcester. From Pennsylvania, Charles Biddle and Henrik Wright. And from Virginia, Charles Upton. And I'm so glad they made it because on the 4th, Lincoln gave his first speech since his inauguration. It's after the War's Powers Act and its ending definitely should be heard. The Constitution provides, and all states have accepted the provision, that the United States shall guarantee to every state in this Union a Republican form of government. But if a state may lawfully go out of the Union, having done so, it may also discard the Republican form of government, so that to prevent its going out is an indispensable means to the end of maintaining the guarantee mentioned. And when an end is lawful and obligatory, the indispensable means to it are also lawful and obligatory. It is with the deepest regret that the executive found the duty of employing the war powers in defense of the government forced upon him. He could but perform this duty under the existence of the government. No compromise by public servants could in this case be occurred. Not that the compromises are not often proper, but that no popular government can long survive a marked precedent that those who carry an election can only save the government from immediate destruction by giving up the main point upon which the people gave the election. The people themselves, and not their servants, can safely reverse their own deliberate decisions. As a private citizen, the executive could have consented that these institutions shall perish, much less could he in betrayal of so vast and so sacred a trust as these free people have confided to him. Felt that he had no moral right to shrink, or even to count the chances of his own life and what might follow. In view, in view of his great responsibility, he has so far done what he has deemed his duty. You will now, according to your own judgment, perform yours. Sincerely hopes that your views and your actions may so accord with his as to assure all faithful citizens who have been disturbed in their rights of a certain and speedy restoration to them under the Constitution and the laws. And having thus chosen our course with guile and with pure purpose, let's renew our trust in God and go forward without fear and with manly hearts. I'd like to thank a uh, field marshal for uh, help with this video. He um, found me a lot of nice MP3s. His channel is in the description. It's fantastic. I particularly like his um, documentary videos. He just released one on uh, the Siege of Vienna, which is very popular thanks to a rock song from Sabaton. So you should definitely check him out.